We need art in the arrangements of cities as well as in the other realms of life to help explain life to us, to show us meanings, to illuminate the relationship between the life that each of us embodies and the life outside us. We need art most, perhaps, to reassure us of our own humanity. However, although art and life are interwoven, they are not the same things. Confusion between them is, in part, why efforts at city design are so disappointing. It is important in arriving at better design strategies and tactics to clear up this confusion. Art has its own peculiar forms of order, and they are rigorous. Artists, whatever their medium, make selections from the abounding materials of life and organize these selections into works that are under the control of the artist. To be sure, the artist has a sense that the demands of the work, i.e. of the selections of material he has made, control him. The rather miraculous result of this process, if the selectivity, the organization, and the control are consistent within themselves, can be art. But the essence of this process is disciplined, highly discriminatory selectivity from life. In relation to the inclusiveness and the literally endless intricacy of life, art is arbitrary, symbolic, and abstracted. That is its value and the source of its own kind of order and coherence. To approach a city, or even a city neighborhood, as if it were a larger architectural problem capable of being given order by converting it into a disciplined work of art, is to make the mistake of attempting to substitute art for life. The results of such profound confusion between art and life are neither life nor art. They are taxidermy. In its place, taxidermy can be a useful and decent craft. However, it goes too far when the specimens put on display are exhibitions of dead, stuffed cities.